Now this example may get kind of messy because I want to draw several things on a graph uh, and I may not want to race and just keep drawing over things. So I'll try to go through slowly so we don't lose anyone. There's going to be times that we're going to want to draw uh, certain angle measurements when they're in standard form or they're in a standard position that we have. So I have four examples over here of radian measurements that I would like to draw. And I designated them with this different, uh, the different versions of angles that we'll often see. We're going to see angles uh, measured in or described as theta or um, alpha or beta or gamma. Again, those are just designational variables. Like we're used to in the past where we had x, y's, and z's. Uh, in trigonometry, we're going to use a lot of times theta or alpha, gamma, uh, and beta and so forth. So don't let that throw you off, but it does, it, well, it took me a little time to get used to it. You might be easier to track on that than I was. So we want to have an idea that I want to draw theta, its measurement of pi force. And so I have to have an idea. Well, if I remember that the entire distance all the way around was two pi, then what's one quarter of two pi? Uh, or how much of a percentage is one quarter of two pi? And in that case, it's one eighth of the way around. So if I think about it this way, uh, if I know all the way around is two pi, halfway around was pi, what if I went half of that? What if I went just from here to there? That's half a pi. And then if I half that again, so that I would get some measurement right about there. I'm just going to draw a line all the way through. So from here to there, that would be a quarter pi, or one eighth all the way around. I know that's going to take you a little while to unpack and kind of get that through your mind a little bit. Uh, so don't, don't just shrug it off and just kind of move on. Make sure you get that in your head uh, before you go too far down the road. So... The measurement of pi force has a measurement from its initial position here on the x-axis rotated up one-eighth around the circle to right here is pi force. I just might mark right down here that angle is pi force. The next one we're looking at is I have alpha equals pi force pi. So right now, before I get to it, where do you think that's going to wind up at? Which quadrant? That's a better question. Which quadrant do you think five-fourths pi is going, to, is going to land in? Well, if I know that five-fourths five pi, I can break that down as to be in pi plus one-fourth pi. Hmm. And so the distance of pi in radian measurements around the circle continues on, and I know how I'm going to do this here, continues on all the way to here. That's a measurement of pi, and then I need to go a quarter more pi, which is down to that spot right there. So I'll draw a little angle. I'll call that alpha, and then I'll just mark over here that that is five-fourths pi. So the angle that starts here flips all the way over and comes down and lands right there. It is five fourths pi. The next one I have is beta. Now look at one. This one's a little bit different. This one is a negative three fourths. So we have to remember when we see a negative, that tells us to go clockwise rather than counterclockwise. So that means that we need to start here and then start traveling that direction. And we'll need to travel in a negative direction, three quarters pi. And if we remember again, and that might be helpful for some people is to divide their circles into eighths. And then look at that because each quarter of pi is an eighth around the circle. And so here's one eighth, which is one quarter, another quarter, another quarter in pi terms. So I see that I have an angle negative going this way and that one was beta and that was three quarters pi or negative that we have on that case. All right, I know I'm getting a little messy here and so let's 
let's see if I can do a little bit on this last example that I have here. Start with my initial angle. I'm going to have that solid in. And sometimes it's helpful to some of us if we also maybe just lightly put in and divide our circle into eighths. Because I remember that each quarter pi rating is an eighth of a way around the circle. And I need to figure out here, I have gamma as listed and I need to discover what nine fourths measurement would be, nine fourths pi. Well, 9 fourths pi, that's 8 fourths pi plus 1 fourth pi. 8 fourths pi is 2 pi plus a quarter pi. Now, I just went through that extra song and dance there just to kind of break it down and kind of get a sense what is 9 fourths pi really. And that really is, it's already a 2 pi plus a fourth left over. And the reason why that's important is that I see that this angle measurement, it's more than a full circle. Hmm, how about that? So if I started traveling around the circle, I would get back to its beginning point of two pi, and I still got another quarter pi to travel. Well, that's all right, we can do that. We'll just keep continuing around the circle and stop at that additional quarter pi mark. And then that angle right there, that represents, whoops, sorry, not my alpha, but that represents my, here, let's do a better gamma. There you go. That represents my gamma's measurement angle, in that particular case, of 9 fourths pi.